Welcome to The Real Review, sponsored by Parametric and Lazy Ape Studios, where you get some of the latest happenings, real thoughts, and perspectives in the world of film and television. My name is Matt Hay, and with me here, I have Mr. Joel Cunningham. <laughs> Joel Cunningham. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it. I know. I was kind of threw it to you, and I was like, what's your name? You kind of politely handed it off, and I was I like, did. what? Or oh, my name. I gave you the gesture of, here's, yeah. what's your name? Yeah, I like that. Hey, how's it going? Good, pretty good. Doing Excited awesome? to talk about. Ah, well, not awesome, maybe. Yeah, medium. Medium. I'm very hungry. You're hungry. I'm very, very hungry. Do yeah. you get hangry? Are you a hangry person? I'm not a hangry person. I'm. I get when I get hungry. I get silly, which I don't know how you combine those That's words. That's odd. Hilly. <laughs> You're hilly. <laughs> yeah, I get like really goofy when I'm when I'm hungry and tired. So, hoofy. Yeah, hoofy. I get a hoof hair. Yeah. So. But uh, just so you know, we are actually doing our Tube Talk segment. In this mm-hmm. segment, we are dedicated to talking about the previous week in TV, kind yes. of what we've had a chance to check out, uh, some stuff that maybe we've had a chance to catch up on. I know I'm trying to catch up on Mr. Robot. You've already had the Mr. fortunate- Robot. Yes. Talking uh, about that though, relevant fact, okay. I texted you about this. Did you hear all the craziness that's going on with the hackers Yes. In the world? It's called something cry yeah what is the name of it i forget exactly what it's called but it's wanna cry wanna cry i think yeah i think it's wanna cry um, yeah but it's like right out of mr robot yeah it sounds like it. i was thinking i was thinking oh dude Rami malik i don't know how far you're in in the series but there's a hack i'm only like the fifth episode in so. oh okay there's something that happens later on which in a way is very similar to this whole ah. thing that's going on with the software they literally are like blocking hospitals from yeah. accessing their so computers. So it's really crazy. Horrible. And and if if you don't know what we're talking about, just Google it. Yeah. Uh, there's It's like the largest global hack in the history of yeah, the world. <laughs> absolutely. And so people are holding data hostage. Yeah. And in order to get your data back, like, a, like you said, a hospital yeah. got hit, you know, they're like, yeah. you have to pay X amount of money. Yeah, there's a hospital in LA that paid like $13,000 to get all their files if you d- And back. if you don't, like, over time, the the amount goes up, right, and eventually it blocks. It yeah, and eventually it deletes it all, blocks yeah, it, and yeah. deletes it. So yeah, kind of crazy, man. Yeah, when you get to that part in Mister Robot, you'll be like, oh my goodness, it, it is. But right. I, I would say that the the cool thing, I don't know if you're following it. We'll get to the television talk in a moment yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> um, some guy managed to stop it. Did you hear about that? No. How he managed to stop it was the most ridiculous thing ever. It was a, a Norton, fluke. Norton so antivirus. The, no. <laughs> yeah, he just ran a virus scan. You yeah. know, super simple. Yeah. No, he uh, he registered a website, and I guess that the the malware before it blocks before it activates and blocks your content yeah there's like a fail safe that exists um in the software that it'll re- it'll check for a, a website registration yeah and if there's a registration that's uh currently active under a website that's in the coding of the malware then it will stop the software from happening so when the guy registered the domain it literally stopped all the software from activating around the globe but it's like a temporary reprieve Weird. yeah so that's they don't crazy, know man. at any point it could just literally go no, I'm going to keep going, you know, so the so hackers could do something else. Mr. So. Robot's after everybody. Yeah, absolutely. That's so, crazy. Yeah. Anyways, so, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm Side trying to get track. caught up in that. We can talk about that later. I think yeah. season three comes out either later this year, maybe. I believe so. But, yeah, um, yeah we can, we can look July, at it. I'm still in season know. one. So we can go into that, but um, there are a couple of ways that people can get connected with us. Mm-hmm. If you want to uh, go ahead and let the find folks yeah. uh no, what's no, up? How to get connected? So uh, we have our website, which is currently active, and hopefully, we'll, hopefully, neither of us get that stuff going on. Um, which is realviewmedia.com. You can check that out. We've got a ton of good stuff on there. Um, Everybody, visit the website and yeah. and just always go there every day and check to make sure that it's still good. We are posting stuff, so yes. we get some good stuff up there. <laughs> and then we also have our Facebook, which is facebook.com/slash realviewmedia. We'd love to get uh, connected with you on that site. That's a a great way to know about uh, some other really common pop things that are popping up and. Uh, if you on Facebook all the time, it's really easy to disconnect there and then it'll pop right up in your newsfeed. Right. So uh, we got that. We got our Instagrams. We got our Twitters. Uh, that's at Real Review Media. And uh, you can connect with us on those platforms as well if you like. Do it. Because yeah. it's cool. Yeah. And we're doing something a little special with this podcast, right? Because we're talking about some right. upcoming Right, so shows. a couple of networks, and we'll probably do some more in the next show as well, but mm-hmm. some upcoming, uh, some TV networks, uh, some big cable companies like Fox and NBC, they released uh, a slate and some trailers for some of their new trailer uh, shows coming out. Right. Um, and so we'll talk about that a little bit as well. Um, but to start off, yes, I want to talk about Better Call Saul. This is a great one. <laughs> this is this is always it's a, a really one. interesting one for me because when we get a chance to talk about it, it's like the the newest episode airs 
a couple hours from now. So right. it's like one of those things where I'm like, I am so excited to see it. I wish I knew what, what happened right now, you yeah. know? Um, so this last one we got to saw or see, I, I guess I should start. The previous one was kind of like that halvesy about uh, Gus, yeah. Gus Fring. Yeah. And, uh, and then a little bit about Jimmy's situation. Mm-hmm. This one definitely resolves the Jimmy situation that we didn't really know fully what was happening. Yeah. That was a huge frustration of mine. Right. I was like, I want it a little more. Exactly. And I didn't mind it as much, but this one was very, very interesting. We got another, yet another Breaking Bad alumni. Yes. And, um, <laughs> Huel? Huel. 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 Yeah. And, um, and it's kind of like, uh, Jimmy is is getting his dream team back together. Yeah, kind of how it feels. Like, let's get my receptionist. Let's get Huel. Yeah. So we're gonna get that other guy with the Bluetooth, right? Was yes. he a part of the gang? Yeah. Um, there was uh, a, I forget the comedian. There was a comedian that was also one of his bodyguards that's friends with Huel. R- that's what I'm talking about. The yeah. Bluetooth guy. Yeah. Like he's a, or at least that's what I thought it was. Um, I can't think of his name right now. Anyways, um, Cred. The it, it seemed I'll like he was kind of tomorrow, getting it together. He was very, very, it was very, very smart. I knew that, I thought maybe they, that he hired Huel to like try and steal the tape. I was actually yeah. surprised when they played the tape. Yeah. I was kind of like, oh, they're that, playing the tape right now. <laughs> yeah. I, I Let me just say, I loved this episode. Yeah. I really, really enjoyed it. This is, in a sense, what you've been wait, waiting for. Yeah. In a bad way, but you've like been waiting for Jimmy to just get Chuck. Yeah. For all of the crud that he's been putting him through and the way that Chuck has been super selfish yeah. and egotistical and just really being mean to Jimmy. Yeah. And you got that. Yeah. And that was so beautiful in a way. Um, but yeah, I the, the thing they set up very strongly at the end of the last episode was they asked about the tape. And so my thinking at the beginning of the episode was... Well, they're gonna. He he wants to hire Huel because he asks um, uh, the vet the vet the vet guy to do a pick job. Yeah, like a very specific kind of pick job. And so you're thinking the pick job is gonna be this tape. So yeah. they can't, they won't have it for evidence. So it kind of destroys Chuck's narrative. Yeah. But they do something even better in a way, which is to let Chuck kind of hang himself. Yeah. Yep. And they wouldn't have been able to do that if they had prevented the tape. That would have, then it would have turned into like, well, what happened to the tape? Well, where's the tape at? Right. Tampering with evidence and all this stuff. Whereas with this one, they literally let Chuck kind of tie the rope and then slowly put himself in it, and then you know, which right. is very dark sounding. But uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I and I really like that too. It's smart because I didn't I didn't see it coming. Yeah. Um, like I said, I was surprised when they actually let the tape play in the yeah. courtroom. I was like, oh wow. So what? what were they going to do? And I'm like, oh, wow, Jimmy is not just protecting himself. He's getting full-on revenge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. what he's doing. Yeah, he's getting complete and full-on revenge and in such a, oh, man, such a good way because, again, this isn't something that, this isn't something that Jimmy is kind of doing. Like, he did it, mm-hmm. but he went about it and he's completely open and transparent about it because you know, we do talk about spoilers here, so if uh, if there are people that aren't wanting to get spoiled uh, about this episode, then maybe uh, skip ahead by about a few minutes here. Um, but so when he plants the battery, when Huel plants the battery on Chuck, um, he even I was I was thinking that he was going to do something and not mention what he did or just act like it was circumstance that kind mm-hmm. of happened. But he even admits in the courtroom, like, "Hey, I planted this battery on him. I set this entire thing up." So it's like he didn't do anything wrong. In a way, he yeah. kind of lets Chuck hurt himself. Although Chuck is right in the sense that Jimmy did do some really bad things, he completely pulls the rug out from under Chuck to the to the point where even though he's right, he looks like such of a fool and such a crazy man that they're never going to believe him now. Right. Which was just so amazing, such an amazing way to do it. And here's the thing too, because Chuck, we've always known that Chuck, well, at least until he made his first trip to the hospital with Jimmy in season one, where yeah. um, we've, we've known since then that it's a mental thing. It's right, not an actual bed. condition. And yeah. it's because the doctor was like, he doesn't have a thing. You right. Know? Like, he, she proves it with the electricity yeah. that's running through the bed that he's not responding right. to. Right. So, um, without that really, without him skipping a beat, Jimmy is still there. It's yeah. like still like helping him and stuff. And, yeah. And for helping him with an issue that's not, you know, that's not present. You know, yeah. we, we know that Chuck has a mental issue and they really do a good job. Even the last shot, like he, Chuck is affected 
by quote unquote electricity when he's stressed out is what happens. Yeah. And so they that last shot they pull back and it's just the exit sign, which he said didn't bother him before. Right. You hear that mm-hmm. yeah. noise and he's just like ah <laughs> Which they set up perfectly. I mean there were so many things that they set up well with this, even with his wife Rebecca, his ex wife, yeah. Chuck's ex wife Rebecca, uh being there in the beginning and showing because you didn't know at that point what role she was going to play in the episode, right. showing that she's very important to Chuck, mm-hmm. that even though uh, they had become you know exes, that he in a way kind of still had a thing for her probably, right. and was still kind of hoping. And then in a way still, Jimmy lets Chuck hang himself because she was going to leave. Like yeah. she was going to go. Yep. And Chuck's like, no, stay, stay. I want you to stay for this trial. I need you here. I want you to see what's going on. And let's Chuck again put himself in a position where he ends up ruining <laughs> whatever good you know vibes he might have had with Rebecca because yeah. of the complete jerk. He just and goes crazy. Off in yeah, the last scene. Oh my gosh. I mean, it was so rewarding in a way, and you got to see just everything that Chuck feels about Jimmy. Yeah, just coming out in, in the most complete, ugly way. Right, and it all ties back to what we've kind of gotten hints of before, which is that. He really feels like Jimmy's always, since being a kid, even took advantage of his family. Right. And because he took advantage of his family, he's felt this way about Jimmy all the way through the different stages of his life yeah. as he's grown up. And yeah, Jimmy was doing bad things, but that doesn't really tie into specifically where he was at now. Right. You know, but Chuck couldn't see that. Yep. Because as kids, Jimmy was oh, the guy man. that took advantage of stuff. So... So good. Just yeah. so rewarding and so amazing. And I'm like, where are they going to go from here? I know, because they have five episodes left. Right. And so they got to, I'm, I'm assuming that we're going to have some sort of rebuttal from Chuck and crew yeah. over at Hamlin, Hamlin, and McGill. And so I'm thinking, um, I don't know. I think maybe maybe Chuck's going to go on the offensive. Uh, Chuck's ex-wife is going to slap Jimmy in the face at one point in time. <laughs> and be like, what are you doing? Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering how long it's going to take before we actually get a, you know, where he goes off and does. Yeah. Solve. That's kind of my thing. It's like, how much more left is there to the story until we get Breaking Bad? Because I don't think much because I think Vince Gilligan, if anybody knows this, yeah, he's willing to end it when he needs to. Exactly. And that's I mean, why Breaking Bad was awesome. It right. ended perfectly. Yep. And I think that. I think that he would be smart enough to apply that to this show as well. So I don't see it yeah. going more than five. I don't either, but we're, I mean, at this point, I like, I don't really know what more, uh, obviously we need to see what happens with Mike and Hector and Gus yeah. and kind of how that all plays out. Um, Kim? Like, we need to get, yeah, we need to find out what happens with Kim. Yeah. I mean, at this point you could kind of, you could realistically see Chuck and Jimmy not communicating at all anymore. Right. Like their, their brotherliness is done. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. but something needs to happen with Kim. There needs to be a fallout there and something needs to happen with Hector. And I'm guessing, I'm thinking maybe those two are related. Maybe there's some tie in with, with Gus and Mike and Jimmy that happens involving Hector. That kind of is the final straw for Kim. Right. Because at this point they're actually a really good stage. They're in a really good state. And as we unfortunately know <laughs> with this show, it's like whenever things are going well for Jimmy, something always tends to happen where he yeah. falls right back into a bad stage. It's like things get better and then things get worse then things get better. So I don't know. I think maybe, I think we're going to see Chuck die. I think, I think so. possibly. Um, and I've been thinking this since the beginning of the season. I thought maybe it was going to happen when he was in that copy shop yeah. and passed out. Um, but I think we're going to see that. And that's going to like, make Jimmy just push him a little bit further away to feel bad about himself. I could see him taking his own life. I know as crazy as that well, sounds. Well, Chuck but... is all about his job and his livelihood right. as a as a lawyer. He flipped out just about the fact that people thought that he might have made a mistake with the numbers. Right. I mean, he freaked out. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I could see him getting really, really, really messed up in the head from this, yeah. going complete, you know, walls to the balls with the whole yeah, like yeah, yeah. you know electrical things and trying to prove it and completely segregating himself from the entire world i don't right. know yeah so yeah, we'll see i don't know what would you rate this thing oh man i'd give this a pretty high one i'd say probably like a 9.5 9.6 out of 10 i mean way up there yeah i know it was really good 9.5 yeah. as well for me awesome um definitely up there uh so check it out better call Saul. let us know what you guys thought about it yeah um let's move on to this uh this is a third to last episode of the flash that we watched this last week um so season three and it was it was all right i liked it um in my opinion it was kind of like a filler to get you prepped for the last couple episodes yeah in the sense where it you know not a filler in a bad way but a filler where it doesn't like progress the overall story arc on yeah. how to stop Savitar, but yeah. it's more about 
um, uh, you know, kind of a self-contained episode to get you kind of into the psyche of some of the characters yeah. a little bit more. Yeah. I think. And I, I did enjoy seeing uh, unencumbered Barry just kind of like, yeah. Know, hey, I'm, hey, what's going on, guys? Happy, yeah, friendly I, Barry yeah. with no issues. Yeah. No issues. I have no baggage, you yeah, know? Yeah. And I don't know. What, what were your thoughts? This season's really stretched him acting wise, by the way. I feel right. like he's taken on a lot of, because he's like the emo. Barry, now we know he's Savitar. Super villain Barry. Yeah, now he's like this happy-go-lucky Barry. I yeah. mean, he's taken a lot of really cool roles. And the singing, dancing, you know, musical yeah. Barry. So he's been stretched. I think it's been good. I think he's done a great job with him for the most part, except for maybe Emo Barry. I feel like he's, <laughs> he's such a happy, friendly guy. I'm going to get into what I thought of the episode, but I'm yeah. just talking about this. I feel like he's such a happy, friendly, like, demeanor that it's really weird when he gets all dark and emo. It's like, yeah, it just doesn't see you. I mean, right. there's a really funny uh, set of photos that I think they, the paparazzi, like, found one day, and he's like, he's like walking down the street and he like smiles he's like smiling at the camera like (laughs) winking and like pointing at the camera like hey what's up guys and that just seems like his natural demeanor to me so but whatever uh as far as this episode goes i felt like good i got uh, more information than i wanted in some areas and then in other areas i got more information that i wanted that i needed um specifically that goes in regards to sort of the two main plot lines which is caitlin snow's sort of yeah arc of working with them and then also with barry and iris barry and iris I felt like that was the the benefit of this episode to me because we've talked about this. I've never really liked the two of them together because yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it is always really felt like the two of them are almost kind of just together due to circumstance that they've always been close to each other. They were like brother and sister. They grew up together and they both find each other attractive. And so they're going to date each other. Whereas this episode, you really get a sense of like, they joke with each other. They explain things. She's having to like help them. There's, they're going through some different things. They talked about even when she first met him and how that played out with his parents of yeah. dying when he was a kid and how he was, she was like a crying shoulder for him and how that was such an impactful thing. And it really gave me a sense of like why their relationship was, uh, was, it has been together, why they have been together and why that's been yeah. so successful for them. So I really liked that and I felt like it was good. Although I agree it is a bit of a filler episode, um, and it was very manipulative type way. It was like, we're going to shock your brain and like make you not be able to remember things, which was like ridiculous yeah. to me, but kind they of didn't, funny. They didn't dabble in the science yeah. too much. They're like, yeah, if we just do this, you know, neuron thing, we can separate this. And they yeah. didn't explain how right. or why. They're just and like science. <laughs> yeah. I liked HR's kind of romantic thing going on with Tracy. Yeah. Although the first time that they almost kissed, I thought it was really silly and stupid that he left. Yeah. Um, but I felt like it was good when he came back and they resolved it in that yeah. episode. If oh, they yeah. had left it there, I would have been kind of upset. Yeah. Um, so the thing that I didn't like, and we talked about this was, I mentioned this was the thing with the uh, Caitlin Snow. Yeah, I I didn't like how they presented her in this episode because I've had this kind of question in the back of my head, which is why is she so why is she so ticked off? Yeah, why is she so angry? I in the beginning it was like she was angry because her alter ego this alter ego power that she has forces her to be angry and it's like a split personality well, i was thing, thinking like legion right? yeah like it's felt like a split personality thing right. whereas with all the other people in the series when they've taken on these powers and they've gotten these powers that's never really been a thing they more or less get the powers and it's just them but with their powers and then their powers cause them to be kind of good or bad they either take those powers and they do good things or they do bad things and it kind of like heightens their internal personality or, or adjusts their internal personality with her. For some reason, her powers caused her to have like this split personality thing. Right. And that was like, I didn't, it wasn't very realistic to me, but it fit and it was, it, it matched. But then with this, it almost was like, well, she can still be a good person. Yeah, and she it, was like working right, with Right, she the was team. like working with yeah. them and she was joking with them at times like when the whole story thing was going yeah. on, she kind of like resu- like so it didn't make sense to me. It's like what is her deal? Like yeah. why is she just so upset? She if has she, mom issues, we know that. We know she has mom issues. We know she's had issues with her ex, you yeah. know, as far as like him dying well, and everything. A couple exes. Right, a couple exes <laughs> at this yeah. point, but she really has no reason to be ticked off at the team. She right. wants her powers gone. They want her powers gone. They're trying to help her. They've extended themselves. They've yeah. did, they haven't attacked her. 
They've saved her life even on numerous occasions. So I don't get what she's so upset about. And this episode, in a sense, proved to me that like there's really no reason yeah, in a yeah, way yeah. for her character to be, to be as upset as she is about things besides just reasons. We need her to be upset at them because it creates drama. Right. So that's where I didn't like it. I didn't like what they presented with her character in this film, this episode. I, I would agree with that. Um, I and I, I like to think that a lot of times when they explain and even when they break it down into layman's terms and what they do about explaining the science sometimes, which I've done a good job in the past. Yeah. They, um, they, at the very beginning, Savitar tried to explain like how he exists. Right. And so he explained it to Barry and Barry went back to explain it to the crew, which Cisco drew a diagram, which I kind of <laughs> vaguely understood. I still don't get it. I'm I don't not get lie. it. I don't. I paused it and went back and watched it again on my DVR thing, and I was like, "What?" Well, I feel like I've gotten it before. Yeah, but I don't get it. I didn't get. I it. get who Barry is yeah. in the timeline. I just don't get how he said that they could create like a cyclical loop like that. How he's not like right. he never like began or ended. The, he's their just... their idea of it is that he himself created himself. Right. Through manipulation of going through time and right. manipulating it because he was originally created by Barry doing the jump, which again I really can't stand there going back to the whole like, well when you did the whole thing in the past flash, and flash yeah point. the flashpoint and everything like that. I really don't like the whole flashpoint manipulation know, so, type stuff. It's, it's been the hindrance of this season. Exactly. Like literally there okay. Go back and change Flashpoint. At this point, like, obviously Flashpoint has done some really horrible things. If it created Savitar, right. you know what I mean? You would go back and change Flashpoint. I'm sorry. He would do he, it. He would because, go back and create Flashpoint 2.0. Right. Because the point, <laughs> exactly, because the thing is, and I'm just going to be honest, nobody would know. Like, no, but he would be Why the only person. <laughs> they wouldn't know that it was weird. They yeah. would just think that it's normal. Right. You know? So, I don't know. So yeah, I guess his jumping through time and creating like a duplicate of himself time remnant. or a time remnant that somehow didn't die because he saved himself, which allowed him to do the jump that it's so that like by yeah, Savitar not killing himself, he allowed himself to be created, but he didn't know about himself and he wouldn't have known to not kill himself unless he <laughs> knew about himself. So that's where it's like, and if, at one okay. point, and at one point, that's where I think at the very beginning of the episode, Savitar goes... Through manipulating time, it just creates crazy scenarios well, he's, like this. He's like, yeah, that's what happens with time. You can't right. really keep explaining it. But then they immediately like... disprove that because as soon as Barry forgets who he is, then Savitar forgets who he is. Right. So it's like, well, how come that has an impact? Right. But this whole time thing, yeah. So you can't, you go, your eyes go crazy. Listen, you if like they're- like go sideways and li- what's li- going on? Listen, out there, if you are a time travel expert- <laughs> And you could shed some light on this. Please email us at realreviewmedia@gmail.com. Send us a diagram. Yes, create one. Explain what's going on. Yeah, with pictures as many pictures as possible. Yes, illustrate it, please. <laughs> My yeah. goodness. Yeah. If it doesn't have pictures, it's yeah. just kind of like nonsense. Yeah. But again, I think on the on the on the whole, I I appreciated what they did with Barry and Iris. Yeah. And I I'm more connected now. And I'm I will be more upset if Iris does end up like you know kicking the bucket. Yeah. Which it's feeling like now they might not go that way. I don't think they will. You know, I but, think in the comic book series, not spoilers, but I think in the comic book series she does die. Okay. So they might go there, but it's a television show and it's going to have a limited run, I'm guessing. And we so, know, know that when people die, it doesn't really mean they're dead. It's yeah. an arrow and flash and in, in, in Legends of Tomorrow. People just come back to life all the time. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. There's no reason why Barry wouldn't, in my mind, if she dies... In one episode. Go get Iris from Earth too. Yeah. Or go no, or like literally jump back a week prior to her dying and get Iris from then and then just take her forward. I know. You know what I mean? Because it's like Like if he creates Flashpoint, he's like, all right, well, I'm only really messing with like a couple days here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like literally Iris is just going a couple days into the future. That, right. That would be like that's all he would have to do. You know? So what would you rate this in? Um, I'd give it probably a maybe a seven point eight. Okay. Two. I'm closer to seven. I think. Okay. Yeah. Um, overall, I'm excited. The last two episodes, it's just kind of like it's winding to something, yeah. and I'm hoping it's it pays off. Yeah. Well, we got Sharkhead now. <laughs> got All right. The, yeah. The big. What was that guy. red thing? Was that that was the power remember. source? Yeah. I'm guessing it's the power source they're going to use for the bazooka for the Speed Force bazooka, which is a great name. Yeah. Yeah. I bazooka. Do, do. Well, yeah. he said Speed Force cannon, which rolls off the tongue better, but he's like yeah. Speed. She's like Speed Force bazooka. I was like, so oh. yeah, she says Speed Force cannon, right? No, I and think then he, he says cannon. He says cannon, and she's. I thought he suggested bazooka. I don't know. We'll, well go he, back and watch she, the tape. Yeah. Anyway, you, you tell us. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, there you go. Um. So yeah, that's our review of the Flash. Um. And we got a couple episodes left, and so we're excited yes. to talk about that. But um, on 
next I want to move into Arrow because mm-hmm. um, that's something that I've been keeping up on. The name of the episode was Honor Thy Fathers. Um, and I feel like this episode does, it wasn't a kind of um, uh, a stagnant episode where I felt like it didn't move the for- the plot forward overall. Yeah. We did learn a few things. We learned that uh, Chase uh, is, is really in cahoots with uh, some people to essentially release a a toxin, a weaponized tuberculosis over the city. Dun, dun, dun. And um, and Oliver ends up, quote unquote, capturing him by figuring out really that they, Chase's father disowned him as a child and really wasn't like a proud of him. And, How dare he? I know. And so <laughs> he went over this and, and I was really upset at first when this happened because what happened is Chase was the is Prometheus, who was the big bad of the season. He basically says you're right, there's no point in me fighting anymore and basically gives himself up. Hmm. And just like right then and there, like, like he like gives him a sword and he's like, go ahead and like kill me. And <laughs> Oliver is obviously like, no, I'm a good guy. I'm not going to do that, you yeah. know? And um, they capture Chase. And I, f- for a brief second, I forgot that Chase has Oliver's son. And I was like, wait, why is Prometheus? This is so dumb. Why is he giving up himself? Is this how he c- gets captured? Yeah. This is ridiculous. And I was like, wait a minute. Wait, he's got a son. Never mind. There's an end game in here because I, f- I forgot that he had a son. And so they show the scene at the very end where like uh, Prometheus or Chase is in this like glass box and he's kind of like smirking like, you know, I'm right where I want to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah. like the Joker in yeah. The Dark Knight where he's in jail and then- Does he start explode. clapping? There's like a slow motion pan in. And- I think if you look closely into his eyes, he's clapping on the inside. Okay. Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I'm just boofing that scene. Right. <laughs> Dark Knight. But- um. Uh, other than that, we got some cool flashbacks that were kind of pertinent or relevant to the story. We see, I don't know what they were doing. They, they a couple of seasons ago, they had uh, Deathstroke as one of the bad guys, mm-hmm. who was kind of cool. Um, they showed his the name mask. like Deathstroke. Yeah, I mean, they show his decent. mask on the island. Yeah, and and Oliver's getting ready to like. Um, it's it's been five years and each year's been in consecutive with the season, so he's been missing for five years. And this at the end of this season, he should be ready to leave the island. To leave the island to go right. back to where the season one starts. Or tie into lost and no, I'm just kidding. Right, right, right. <laughs> he finds Hurley playing yeah. a game of golf. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. So a smoke um, monster. Right. Things, it's, things are getting wild. Yeah. Um so they're getting ready to do that. However, at the very end, one of the twists with that is um Kovar, who uh um, we thought Oliver killed earlier in the season is actually not dead. Mm. He's on the island, captures Oliver in the last second. So I'm not really sure something's got to happen in the next two episodes and flashbacks as well. Yeah. Because they got to wrap that up. That's That's got to tie into season one here. <laughs> but mm. other than that, it was an all right episode. I was a little... It was it rushed a lot of story elements because it felt like it didn't really want to spend a lot of time. It just wanted to get to point B. Yeah. Without really saying what's happening in point a okay so um it was it was okay as a whole if i had to rate it i would maybe give it a 6.5 okay um i'm this show has kind of been off and on the only i don't know if i said this on on the show before but the only reason why i started watching arrow Mm -hmm. was because the flash was in it and the first season of flash was so dang good yeah that i was just like oh i gotta watch everything because they started doing crossover episodes and i was super pumped about it um and, and since it's waned, uh, season five has definitely been better for Arrow. Um, um, hope, hopefully they end it strong and, and take it, you know, into the future. Uh, well, we should know by the end of next week, you know, the CW shows and what yeah. their schedule looks like. It's true. It'll be interesting to see how some of these shows, if they wrap up or when they wrap up, because they're, these. Are, I mean, these are like serials. Right. You know? So every day of the week, uh, right now, Minus Friday has a superhero show that's all interconnected with each other in CW. They right. just they just added Black Lightning, which will take the Friday spot, which will give it five days a week. Right. So say like, <laughs> how are they going to handle it if like Arrow's numbers tank and they just cancel it? It's like they how gotta, are they going to pick up a new show? Yeah, they got to pick up a new show, and is like Arrow still going to show I up? Bet, I bet he would. Ha- would I he bet come he's on contract. Show? Yes. Yeah. Well, I think he'd be on contract to be a series regular to show up in various yeah. shows. He probably would. Yeah. I It'd think- just be interesting. We're not that far along yet that we have to worry about that necessarily. Yeah. I don't think Arrow is going that bad. CW milks their shows too. They do. All their shows go yeah. for like, like- Supernatural's on like season nine or No, 10? they're on like 13 Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, like 13. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, they, they know how to keep their shows going for quite a bit. They have a formula. That's why all the shows kind of feel somewhat similar to a degree. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, so we'll we'll look forward to that. I like some of the crossover stuff. Yeah. Like, don't like some of it, but it should be cool. Sounds good, man. Um, so let's talk about this upcoming fall schedule. We got a chance to check out some of the Fox shows. Yeah, let's uh, The do trailers it. and the um, NBC, right? Is that it? Correct. Yeah, so Fox and NBC... Uh, the way this is going to play out is over the next... So Fox and NBC l- released their um, fall uh, 2017, the excuse me, shows, 2018 yeah. lineup um, for these for this coming season. And then on the next few days, you're going to have CBS, um, ABC, um, and FX are going to release their lineups consecutively in the, the days after that. And they do it, I think, this way. So it's like tiered. Yeah. So like everybody can kind of get their own day where everybody's like talking about them um, and they don't all compete with each other for like publication news and stuff right. like that. So um, yeah, so we'll today we'll talk about probably these first two release of schedules, which is for um, these two channels. And then I'm guessing by the next uh, show that we record, we'll be, we'll be able to talk about the final three right. uh, kind of season releases. And so um, there's a, bunch of different shows that are premiering which is obvious um from a new season you know they're always going to have a new show coming out um and i figured we you you kind of have a list here matt of the different shows yeah. that you wanted to talk about um do you want to go through that how do you want to handle it yeah so uh let's let's start i'll just kind of go down the list here so yeah and we're only going to be talking about really new shows we're not going to be talking about shows that have been on for right you know, csi the voice and stuff like that like those are going to be there these are brand new yeah. um the studios are taking risks and this is kind of what they have so correct and we're not going to get to everyone either right yeah. so there is uh just to name a few, The Gifted, which is right. uh, an X-Men spinoff series that ties into the X-Men universe, right. kind of so, like Legion does. I pulled up the synopsis on all these. So this one's, uh, in a world where mutated humans are treated with distrust and fear, you know, that we've heard that story before, right. uh, an institute for mutant battles to achieve peaceful coexistence with humanity. Again, one that we've heard before, but this does tie into the X-Men universe. Yep. So it's very similar. Well, to they, like they blatantly type. say X-Men yep. and Brotherhood yes. in the trailer. Yeah. Yeah. And um and I was telling you this before, Joel, I've never been inclined to watch a TV show based off of a trailer. I never feel like the trailer for a show does it justice. Yeah. Um it's tough because even these days a lot of times I need new to give it almost a season. Right. At least the first two episodes. Right. Because the first episode a lot of times is really difficult. Um, at least the first two episodes, but a lot of times these days you have to give it a whole season. You know, almost before you're right. like really engaged in a show, right? Trailers for existing properties, I think, are have a, are, are are better. They can yeah. get you more excited. But for something that you've never seen before, um, I think it has. It's just tough. I've never really been able to buy into something. So yeah. I'm I'm plan- Obviously, I'll give some of these shows a shot. But Gifted, out of all these ones we're going to talk about, is probably the one I'm more looking forward to. Yeah, um, we just, both are big fans of the X Men series yeah. type stuff. We uh, we're both watching the um, Legion, Legion yeah. which was. Interesting, yeah. good show, kind yeah. of off at times, but all really awesome in a lot of ways. Yeah. So I'm interested in this because of the the tie into the X Men universe. Um, I'd say the the trailer that we watched, it's funny because it almost had like a Carrie vibe, right? At one point, because yeah. they're like at the high the high school dance and yeah. they're bullying him and everything turns red and you know powers things yep. lights are exploding. So it was Stephen kind of funny King in that regard. Proud. Yeah, there you go. I, it's almost feeling like a bit of like almost heroes to me as well. I had a little bit of that. You know, because it's like the, the the mutants and people don't like them. And I think with heroes, the difference was nobody knew about right. who the heroes were and they were trying to keep it under wraps, which it doesn't necessarily look like that's what they're trying to do necessarily here. People might know of mutants within this world and they just treat them really badly. We don't know. Yeah. We don't know at this point, but um, it looks like it follows a couple different. There's nobody, there's name, there's no names that kind of jump out to me as like major actors or actresses that I've like seen in a lot of other properties um there's a lot of younger people um it looks like it follows the story of some younger kids that are like in high school and they have powers as well as some adults and some families right um and kind of their their good interactions and bad interaction interactions with their mutant powers this is like an action thing with a bit of family drama right you know so yeah and drama in general i mean i'm, I'm looking forward to it um don't want to spend a lot of time on it just because i don't feel like i can get a good sense of what the show is yeah. until we get a chance to check it out but we'll probably be covering that this yeah. fall when it and, comes out well a lot of this we're covering for people as well for those of you that don't have a chance to kind of check out what's coming out maybe this will pique your interest and you'll have a chance to check out a show and find yeah. out about a show that you do want to watch for sure so sure. yeah um next uh we've been kind of teasing about this uh recently <laughs> yeah it's there's a show called the brave yeah and i'm not really entirely sure other than uh it looks like uh someone's abducted they got to take down a terrorist cell there's a mr baghdadi yeah <laughs> the bad guy in the middle east his name is something 
and his last name is Baghdaddy. Yeah. I think it's bad. I think his first name's bad. Bad, really? bad daddy. Yeah. Bad. Okay. That's worse. I'm just kidding. I'm, okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But or it's daddy. evil or it's like heinous bag daddy. Mr. It's evil man. Mr. Evil bag daddy. Uh, evil something. corp. Evil corp. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the synopsis for this one is uh, the complex world of our bravest military heroes who make personal sacrifices while executing the most challenging and dangerous missions behind enemy lines. That's That really doesn't tell you a whole lot. Nope about it um it looks like in the trailer somebody gets kidnapped and yeah. they have to do like surgery on mr baghdaddy yeah. who's probably going to be this ongoing kind of like evil guy and it's it's like corporate not corporate but it's like political espionage type uh military military espionage and you know terrorist regimes getting taken down and whose side are they on are they right. a spy are they a good guy you know who, what are they doing you yeah. know why are they are they really out for the right reasons you know it looks like that kind of a show with some action I didn't. Yeah, I don't know. It, it again. It's hard for me to get into these trailers just because I don't. I, f- I don't feel like I connect with any new TV show trailer. But I did like. Uh, I don't know the actor's name. Spencer from um, Quantico. Yeah. Um, yeah. The wh- biggest name in this one that I recognize is Anne uh, Hesh. Yeah. Anne Hesh. Yeah. She was like the person who calls the guy right. into like, "Hey, we need your help." Yeah. She works yeah. at. It looks like she works at whatever the government agency is. That yeah. Send these folks out. Yeah. So. Um. You are you super pumped for it? Um, I'd say no, I'm not big one for these kinds of shows, like the, the military espionage right. kind of tactics. Although I am excited for, uh, the Amazon series, which I think it'll come out next year is it's the, uh, Jack Ryan series with John Krasinski. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm kind of actually pretty excited about that. Him okay. in 13 hours was super rad. So I think it'd be pretty, pretty good. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Anyways, moving on, we have the resident. The resident. And, um, for me, this is one of the few dramas that was on Fox's schedule. Actually, this is the only drama that was on, like, other than maybe The Gifted. Yeah. Um, that was on the schedule. Everything else was like a, a comedy. Yeah. Um. So, um, synopsis for this yeah. one. I'll read it. Um, it centers on an idealistic young doctor, 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 who begins his first day under the supervision of a tough, brilliant senior resident who pulls the curtain back on all the good and evil in the modern day medicine. Uh, lives may be saved or lost, but expectations will always be shattered. <laughs> and you can tell that was actually written by Fox. But yep. yeah, so it looks like it's kind of your standard ER, um, you know, Grey's, Amat- Grey's Anatomy type thing, but it looks like it's less focused on maybe some of the romantic drama yeah. that takes place in a lot of those shows. It seems like it's more focused on the role of a doctor and what's appropriate as a doctor and being a new new resident and kind of where that goes. And it looks like there's a bit of a battle that's going on between this like young doctor um, like this, and this older doctor that they're kind of like both at odds with each other. And one's like super duper famous and has been very successful. And the other one's like not as famous, but he's a really good doctor um, as well as like a new resident who kind of comes in and is kind of learning tutelage, kind of growing into the system. And right. so I'm sure there'll be like some rom- romantic things of like relationships with different, you know, nurses or doctors um, that'll probably be going on. And then like, you know, is this person providing the right treatment and one upping and kind of, you know, stabbing each other in the back by, um, offering certain treatments that they weren't supposed to offer, telling other, you know, nurses about some doctor doing something horrible. So right. it looks like that kind of a show. The hook to me, and I think because there's so many doctor shows that you got to really differentiate yourself. And I feel like what they're trying to do here is, and this is even said in the trailer, it's, uh, you know, um, uh, there's a lot of ways to help people. There's, but there's even more ways to like hurt people or yeah. kill people or something like that. Yeah. So he's like, he's like saying, you got to look at doc, you know, what doctors do differently because right. it's modern medicine is not what it seems like. They want, right. they want to like be, throw this like question mark in there. Like what? Yeah. Their big thing isn't about the doctors doing the right things or the wrong things and making mistakes. Um, it's about the doctors doing the right things, the wrong things on purpose kind of right it seems like well they're just they're in it for themselves like are these doctors are these doctors right are they doing the good for the good reasons and the right reasons which is different again because most of the doctor type shows the doctors are always like good people but they have like really bad circumstances because they're like stressed and romantic things going on or house yeah or house you know (laughs) what i mean it's very rarely do they put this light on doctors that they're just bad they could be bad people right that just kill people and then lie about it you know what i mean because that's in the trailer too where one of the doctors like kills somebody and then gets everybody to lie about it yeah you know what i mean so 
I think that's their edge, whether or not that's going to be something that interests you. I don't know. Maybe yeah, we'll I, see. kind of freaks me out. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, I don't know if I want to watch a show where it makes doctors come across people that would just kill somebody and then just cover it up. Yeah. I don't know if that kind of stuff happens. I don't know a lot about it. But oh, I don't know, man. It's a crazy not. world. <laughs> not. I have some friends that are studying to be doctors. I'll talk to them. and Yeah. Ask them if they, uh, you know, lied after they killed How someone. How often do they kill someone and then lie about it? Kind of, <laughs> yeah. Tell so, me about that stat. Yeah. There you go. Um, these next three, th- next three shows we'll talk about. Um, are uh, other comedies that Fox mm-hmm. is releasing. Yep. Uh, you have Orville, you have Ghosted, and then L.A. to Vegas um, in no particular order. Um, the trailers all f- kind of fell flat for me, but I don't know if you want to stick with one or start with one in particular. Uh, I mean, we can just start at the top with, I think, Ghosted or Orville. Can Orville. start with yeah. Orville? Orville. Yeah. I, so the big, the big draw for this one um, is it's a Seth MacFarlane project. Um, he's in it and he's writing it. Um, it's a, he's the showrunner for it. It, it. The idea with this one is follows the crew of the non so functional exploratory ship of the, in the inter the Earth's interstellar fleet three hundred years in the future. And so it's kind of like a in a way it's great for Seth MacFarlane because this is probably like he, this is like he could go in any direction he wants right. because it's set in the future and it's sci fi and it's a spoof on it's an obvious playoff of Star Trek. Yeah, you know which we've seen done. They're so many wear, times. they're wearing similar uniforms. Yeah, and some of the alien like uh, sub characters are like similar facial features. Of yeah, <laughs> characters. exactly. Yeah, and they're spoofing on like oh well he speaks weird languages or his race is violent or yeah. you know or different racial and that's really where it's going to come down to I think is Seth MacFarlane's humor style if you're a fan of his humor style right. and the way that he likes to subvert modern ideas through ridiculous like what means. he does with like uh, Family Guy and, yeah. and a lot of those things yeah then you're probably going to maybe enjoy this the, the, I think there was one line of dialogue that happens in the trailer that I kind of like snickered at which you talked about which is the marble thing where yeah. he like, accidentally thinks it's a mint and eats a marble and he spits it out like yeah. that was like and that's sad to say but that's like the funniest part yeah, yeah, of the trailer the rest of it's going to come down to character interactions it's like yeah. the ridiculous nature of the characters as aliens and mm-hmm. the, the quirky things they do and then the way that they interact and work with each other you know yeah. what I mean because they're supposed to they're trying to present this like drama of like he's on the ship with his ex-wife and are they going to be able to get along and how's that going to work out and they're trying to pilot the ship and like you know they have the crazy well, maybe not crazy, but like the guy that drinks while he's the pilot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the obvious one. And you have like the 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 one guy that's like the militaristic, really rough, gruff, like bad like guy that's usually bad, but he works on the cruise. So he's actually a good guy. And it'll probably turn out he's like really friendly and happy and nice and he's got a good heart or something. You know, that'll be like the twist yeah. there. So I don't know. I got some Galaxy Quest vibes. Totally. Yeah. It looks like Galaxy Quest, the movie. Yeah. Or the TV show. <laughs> the TV sorry. Show. <laughs> yeah. Which I heard they were actually tentatively the idea of making a sequel to that movie. I, I like the first Galaxy Quest. It's, kind I, of, it's like a, it's what do they call it? It's like a guilty pleasure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that it's you're watching this, something that yeah. shouldn't be this like enjoyable, but yeah. <laughs> it kind of is for whatever reason. Uh, so it's so funny. Yeah. Uh, moving on, Ghosted. Yeah, Ghosted. So this is, uh, a, a, the synopsis for this is, a widow's attempt to find love uh, um, are ruined when the ghost of her cheating dead husband, oh, I'm, I think I've got the, this, I've got a movie here. That's not the right I, one. I totally got the wrong one. So, yeah, ghosted is. Oh, here we go. I'm looking at the film. <laughs> I'm looking at the film. I'm like, that's not right. I, I was reading it. Oh my goodness, they don't even have a plot synopsis for this yet. It's okay. Oh we can goodness. basically break it down. So this is this is what ghosted is about. It's you have um, Craig Robinson. That's hilarious. And dude. Adam Scott. Yeah. Um, they're they're two guys just kind of living Which, normal. So lives. it's like they took the Office and Parks and Rec actors right. and put them together in a comedy. I wouldn't be surprised if it was uh, done on purpose because hey, those two guys are known by those executives or people. Yeah. So, um, yeah. anyways, they get abducted by this like underground like you know like X Files yeah. group. They go around you know just <laughs> looking into like weird occurrences. You know, because Ghost there, occurrences, there is, alien occurrences. Right. There's yeah. different there, that there's life out there or whatever. Um and it's just it's just very like slapstick. The the trailer's very slapstick, not a lot of uh not not a lot of that I was laughing at. I, yeah. And again, I, it's just hard to connect with these trailers. I don't know what the character so it's it's kinda like a buddy 
cop a body, type thing, buddies, like a buddies, supernatural cop, right? Or, supernatural cop because they're both sci-fi. They're yeah. both guys that are together that are working. They get they're like fish out of water type thing where they yeah. both come into this organization that deals with the supernatural. It's like an undercover government organization, and they're both a little odd, kind of in their own way. Yeah, I think. Adam Scott character is probably the more weird one in yeah. this scenario because yeah. he says like his wife got abducted by aliens, right. which that'll probably be an ongoing plot line. I'm guessing his wife will probably show up at some point and as you know, an alien be, or something. As yeah. an alien, <laughs> there'll be like some romantic thing, or maybe she'll have like an alien husband or something. Right. That'll be like, you know, an aspect of it. But it's kind of like Adam Scott and Craig Robinson how they get along with each other in going through this and being like detectives in this espionage agency, which sounds kind of funny in a way. I mean, but their characters aren't that there's a reason why their characters were secondary characters on the office and Parks and Rec in my mind. Right. Um, like they were key secondary characters, but they're not like a Michael Scott. Right. You know, and there's a reason why most of these guys don't really have leading roles in most of the projects that they do because their characters are good and they're funny, but they're better when they're interacting off of people. And it just felt like in this trailer, they weren't, neither of them was being used at their best level right. in their interactions with each other, you know? Yeah. So I'm interested to give it a try because try because I like both the actors. I think they're both funny and good actors and have done good stuff in their projects, but I'm not interested because of anything that actually happened in the trailer. Right. So, right. yeah. No, I gotcha. I, I feel the same way. I, and I'm, I'll probably give all of these shows a go. I think it's unfair to judge it based off of the trailer, especially TV trailers. Yeah, that's um, fair. Yeah. Other than that, um, <laughs> I mean... Yeah. Other than that, I, we'll just we'll see what happens with that. I'm kind of I wasn't that interested when I was watching it. There was maybe one chuckle moment. Um, the next one was move on to L.A. to Vegas, which is yeah. interesting because we have a McDermott doing something different. Yeah. So this is uh, the, the actual title for it is L.A. Greater. It's like a greater than sign Vegas. Okay. Which is kind of crazy to me but um so it's um the synopsis for this and this was written i think by one of the people that is on the site but it says uh an ensemble workplace comedy about a group of underdogs trying to find their place in the world set on a friday night flight from lax to vegas and the returning flight on sunday who all share the same goal to come back a winner in the, the casino of life <laughs> <laughs> which sounds like a drama almost but um so it's, it's a straight up pretty much straight up comedy um Dylan McDermott is probably the biggest name. Yeah. He's the, the sort of the pilot of the flight who tends to be, I guess, a bit of a druggy drunkard type person. Yeah. He's got this kind of smarmy, cocksure like attitude where yeah. he's like kind of bigger than everybody else that's around him, but he's also like really into alcohol. Yeah. So, I mean, if you like that kind of an attitude, then he might appeal to you. Um, it's also got, I'm, I'm not, I'm blanking on the lady's name, the main lady that's, that's in this, but um, uh, sorry, Kim Matula who plays a character named Ronnie, I believe. Okay. Um, she's kind of, uh, she works for the airline. Uh, she's a, a stewardess. Um, you've also got Nathan Lee Graham. Um, he, I recognize from Zoolander, but he's the only one that, the only other one that I've kind of recognized. He plays Bernard, who's also a stewardess or steward. I'm not sure how you apply that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so th they kind of like work on the flight and then there's like a cast of characters I'm guessing they'll probably have reoccurring flight people that are on the flight that are probably always traveling back and forth from LAX to Vegas, you know, and so it's kind of like the hijinks that people get on on the flight from LAX to Vegas and then maybe when they're there for a little bit, like people getting drunk and crazy yeah. and, you know, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas type stuff. Right. Um, and so they're all kind of their own character, you know what I mean? So like the main girl's kind of like fed up she's like i'm done with work you know and she's like i'm just gonna quit and she, that's probably her her story arc is she probably hates it but she continues to do it the whole time and then you've got uh dylan mcdermott who's probably like this guy who's just he he's probably really good at his job or something like that but he just does it and he's been doing it for so long he kind of doing it in his sleep and right so i mean there was a kind of a couple chuckler type stuff you know with some of the drinking and drug yeah use i just and, kind of felt the same about yeah. it a little bit i i um it's going to be one of those shows where, like The Office, where a lot of it takes place in an office, this is uh, in an going to take place on an airplane and at a terminal. Yeah. You know, any yeah. given weekend based on, you know, whether they're in LA or in Vegas that weekend or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, I'm not, I'm, this one I'll probably give a shot as well. I mean, there's, I like comedies. You know, yeah. I mean, they're trying. The one thing I will say is that it is a new concept. It it's is a new not concept, like yeah. I've seen a show about people on a plane. It's not like a you know? doctor show. Yeah, it's not Wings. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I guess Wings would be like the closest guess, comparison, yeah. but that's that was more of a sitcom, even. So, yeah, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see kind of what 
transpires from that. Um, the other one that we want to move on, this is actually moving over to NBC, yeah. uh, back to NBC, is uh, I guess we're getting a reboot. Finally. <laughs> Finally, of Will and <laughs> Grace. Kidding. Of Will and Grace. Uh. So it's not really a trailer that we were watching. It's kind of like a, a meta trailer of like the actors kind of coming back together. Right, a self-aware trailer that they're being rebooted. Right. And they're kind of like acting like their character's in the guise of their show being re- restarted. I never watched Will and Grace, so I, I don't have either. a lot to like connect with. And... I didn't either. The, I've never been a big fan of that sitcom style comedy. Like, yeah, oh, you know, okay. Anything okay. of like in front of a live studio audience sure. comedy. Like I've never really- Friends? I got into Friends afterward. Yeah, well, that me one, too. The reason why I liked Friends in a way is because the story continued and it wasn't like every episode was self-contained. It was right. like, you know, you wanted to see the relationships as they grow and they get together. Whereas this one felt like... Like whether Ross was on a break or not. Right. You know? And there was enough differentiation <laughs> of different characters that like you could find out different who's going to do like what. Like Seinfeld. Gonna... Yeah. 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 And so I, for whatever reason, Friends worked for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I, I've much more been a fan of like the humor styles of like Modern Family or sure. you know, The Office or something like that where it's like set in a realistic environment it's not in front of a live studio audience and this I would I never for a good example people are going to freak out I never watched Frasier I never watched Frasier oh, I'm sorry not Frasier um, I can't think of the Seinfeld Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I watched a bit of Frasier because my parents liked it, right, but right. <laughs> I was never a big fan of that because of live studio and stuff. I never watched Seinfeld all that much because of live studio and stuff. I, I get it. I think it, they can be really funny at times. I just never liked that format of the multi camera yeah. type thing. So, Will and Grace was one of those it. shows that I never just got into that. Yeah. You know, so I'm not really probably going to be watching it if you ever go to like a live studio taping those are actually pretty fun i've been i would do a taping yeah Yeah. i mean Uh, i've been to like some conan tapings and stuff okay so i saw rules of engagement okay which is really which is actually a pretty funny show yeah it's it's funny i think if you're married (laughs) but it's one of those things where it's like i went to actually see the actual taping of it patrick warburton and david spader in that show and it's kind of like um, and it's fun. They have a ton of fun. It's like a party. They ship in pizza and stuff. Guys, go see tapings. It's yeah. free and it's fun. I think I just get sick of it. Like I watched, I've watched a couple episodes of Big Bang Theory, but okay, I never yeah. really got into that. I watched a couple episodes of uh, Two and a Half Men, but I never really got into that. It's it's just the style. It's the yeah. format. There's just something about it that it feels very staged and fake that make keeps me from wanting to engage in the story on a sure. deeper level, and it just gets really old. No, I got gotcha. you. I so, got totally got gotcha. you. Yeah. Um, and that brings us to our very last one that we're going to talk about, which is, an, I guess, a new Law & Order spinoff show. Yeah, this was actually interesting because it's Law & Order, but it looks like, when I saw the trailer, the American Crime Story type thing that they did with the O.J. Simpson trials. Right. So they're like framing it as in it's a reenactment of the Men- Menendez murders. Yeah, Menendez. Yeah, Menendez. mixed with footage and looks like footage and news articles and things like that and radio play of like what actually happened. At right. Time. It looks like they're trying to update what Law and Order is because it had right. the musical cues. Yep. Um, but even the title is just so long. It's called Law and Order True Crime, the Menendez Murders. Menendez. Menendez. <laughs> I can't say yeah. it. Mende- yeah, whatever. But, and um and it's just one of those things where they're trying to combine what's what they're I guess they're perceiving as popular with the OJ. Yeah. Uh, that was hugely popular. Right. I mean, that won awards. I mean, that was super duper popular. And maybe they're trying to bring a new thing to it. Yeah, to kind of give it that real flair. Because, yeah. uh, I don't know. So, it, I've never been a huge on Law & Order. I know sometimes it's one of those shows that um, I know my wife. And, and sometimes I kind of get into some of the story elements. But <laughs> um, it's to like have on in the background. Yeah. And just let it play until it's Netflix a good is zone like, out kind you of notice show. you haven't done anything in a yeah. while. Are you still watching? You yeah, know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get that. I, I think, um, yeah, it just feels like they're trying to do something like True Crime Story. And so it might be good. I mean, I American, sorry, American Crime Story, not yeah. True Crime. That's this one. Yeah. Um, it might be good. I really enjoyed the OG Simpson trial show. We talked about that in that episode. And so I'll give it a shot. I'm yeah. actually kind of interested to see kind of how they handle it because I, I wouldn't probably watch a normal law and order. That's yeah. I'm not really great on police procedurals either. We're getting in now to like personal preferences. And I feel like yeah. TV has grown so much beyond this multicam police procedural thing, which was like so common in the nineties and eighties. Yeah. And we've gone on to these shows now, which are very much like, Every episode is in cinematic type thing. And, you know, we talk about the league. You know what I mean? We talk about Better Call Saul or Legend. Uh, Legion. Sorry. Legion, yeah. Legion, Better Call Saul. I mean, every episode is like almost a, 
a short film in yeah. its own right. You know what I mean? And, and there's so much, so many more mediums for uh, shows to be put out there. Yeah. You know? It's not just like network television anymore. Yeah. You have so much more competition. And, and so people I feel like are trying to up their game a little bit. And yeah. it's kind of, kind of working out be pretty, pretty yeah. cool as far as getting some yeah. different creative content. Yeah. So I'm, I'm probably a bit more excited about this one uh, than the other ones, except for maybe gifted. You know. Yeah, um, I, I still, I, yeah, I would say that and gifted are probably kind of towards the top of the list of that list, which yeah. isn't saying a lot, but we'll have to see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's really it for what we have uh, for at least those two uh, network stations. We're gonna try and maybe catch up some more next yeah. week. Maybe yeah. see what uh, ABC, CBS has right. coming. And there out. might be again, there might be some shows we didn't cover. Right. We're just trying to keep time for time. They safe. may not even announced everything yet. So right. Um, we'll, we'll we'll try and uh, cover that next next week, but. Uh, yeah, if, if again, if you, you want to get connected with us, um, reach out to us. RealReviewMedia.com is our website. You can find us at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at RealReviewMedia. And uh, email us. Let us know what's going on. RealReviewMedia at gmail.com. Let us know what uh, TV shows you're looking forward to this coming fall Ew. slash winter spring season. Hey, old. And uh, yeah, other than that, that's it. Anything else? Nah, I think that's it. All right. Well, it's been real. It's been real.